If you thought that Karin was cringy, wait until you see Ida get a woman boner when she sees Boruto and Kawaki having a fight. Powerful Nerdcast Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Boruto's big bad battle with Code is about to go down in the latest chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. But before we begin my review, please, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so so you can see all of my latest videos, reviews, and discussions. If you are already subscribed, make sure you're clicking on that bell notification icon. It will let you know when all of my videos are officially released. And of course, if you are liking my content, hit that like button. It helps out these videos a lot and ensures more people can see my videos. If you want to go that little extra mile, however, please consider checking out my Patreon page. You can make a small donation, which will go a long way in helping to support this channel. And I would love to add your name to this list of amazing people that you currently see on screen. These guys are amazing. They're effectively producing my entire channel. But let's go ahead and jump into this chapter right here, which thankfully is so much more entertaining than the last chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, where practically nothing happened. It was basically just a bunch of talking and going back and forth. This chapter at least has some freaking action. We finally get to see Boruto throwing down with Code, and as predicted, Code is insanely powerful and just basically kicks his ass throughout the course of the entire chapter. That is until the very end where we finally get the big reveal that apparently Boruto is about to manifest those Momoshiki powers. Now whether Momoshiki is in control or this is Boruto actually utilizing them is still kind of up in the air and a mystery, but it's actually the first time that we've actually seen this form since that big time skip scene at the beginning of Boruto. That distinctive scar-like object appearing on his face, the markings, and of course that mysterious eye which a lot of people people have referred to as the Jogen. I also have a feeling that this is probably where Boruto is going to receive that distinctive scar. It makes perfect sense considering that one of Code's main abilities seems to be transforming his hand into a frigging claw. This seems like the perfect opportunity for something like that to happen, to scratch through that headband and go directly across Boruto's eye. I think it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. But let's break down some of the finer details and some of the bigger events which took place in this chapter. At the end of the last one, we got to see that Boruto finally arrived, meeting Kawaki after he'd had his ass handed to him by code, and basically, it's Boruto's turn in this chapter. He is not going to allow Kawaki to be taken away by code, despite the fact that Kawaki basically is just going to allow this to happen. In order to not allow uh, Naruto or anybody else from Konoha Village to be harmed, he's simply just going to go along with them so that he can meet this mysterious person, which of course ends up being Ida. And Ida throughout this chapter was just weird. She was borderline awkward and kind of cringy just for the fact that she seemed to almost be getting off on these events. She seems to have the hots for Kawaki and Boruto and she even really got very excited over the prospect of Boruto saying that no matter what's going to happen, he's going to fight and try to protect Kawaki. It leads to one of the most weird scenes of the entire chapter, but I have to admit that it gave me a laugh. Not as much of a laugh of this panel right here. Man, did they fuck up on the proportions of Naruto's head. Yes, we do return to Konoha Village in the middle of this chapter. Thankfully, we're not there too long, because frankly, this stuff is just boring, especially because the characters are acting, in my opinion, borderline stupid. Naruto should already be out the freaking door at this moment, but he's still just sort of running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Not to mention you have that one inept guard who officially must be fired after all of these events. This is the dumbest character in the entire franchise. Thankfully, right after this, we finally get some action, which is pretty traditional Naruto stuff, which is to say a lot of shuriken flying around, Rasengan's lightning style attacks, and Code basically just one-upping everyone in an extreme style. I wouldn't say that Baruto brings his A-game to this battle, but that's kind of the point. He's trying to just bide some time so that other people from Konoha Village can come and help out and try to get Kawaki out of this sticky situation, but he at least brings some of his signature techniques to this fight, like Rasengan, the Raiton lightning style jutsu, which ends up looking pretty freaking cool in this chapter, I have to admit. Admit. But no matter what happens, Code basically just is able to outspeed him and power him in just about every single way, utilizing his claw marks to teleport all over the place and just elbowing and kicking the shit 
out of Boruto throughout this chapter, basically goading him on to the point where he really wants to see that karma power. He actually goes on to say that he reveres Boruto, and that makes perfect sense because the guy just is completely obsessed with the Otsusuki clan, and considering that he's essentially the vessel for Momoshiki, it makes sense that he would be mildly interested, although he still plans to use him as a sacrifice for the Tentails so that he can get that sweet, delicious chakra fruit. However, he does want to test out how powerful he is. He is a little curious about all of that, which is why throughout the course of this entire battle, he continuously pushes him, trying to manifest those Momoshiki abilities. And at the very end, they finally do appear in a page, which looks really freaking cool, with Boruto slowly standing up, being covered in this chakra-like aura, which is probably the power of Momoshiki. And like I said, we get to see the markings on his face appear, and of course, that very distinctive white eye. It's a really striking image, but again, I don't necessarily know who's in control at this moment. Now, we already know that Boruto has been taking those drugs from Amato, which are supposed to suppress the whole Otsusification process, and I'd like to think that that's really what's going on here, and he's simply just able to use the power of Momoshiki at this point. Although, it's hard to say. I mean, this power has almost sort of transformed him not only physically, but also mentally in a way. In this scene, Boruto's personality has almost gone through a bit of a transformation. He seems incredibly vindictive and rage-filled, and even with his power, I'm still not quite sure he's going to have the ability to take down Code. Only time will tell, and unfortunately, it's gonna be another month before we get to the next chapter. Again, Please make this at least, like, a bi-weekly manga. So what's the rundown on the latest chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations? A lot more happened, and still at the same time, not that much happened at all. Essentially just Boruto and Kawaki arguing with each other, which is kind of what you would expect here. There's always been a lot of tension between these characters, but it really comes to a head in this chapter, especially with Kawaki just accepting his fate and wanting to be taken away by code. Boruto, however, has inherited the will of his father, and there's no way that he's going to allow something like this to happen, especially with the strong bond that he's already formed with Kawaki, and if it means getting violent with him, it's something that he's going to do. There's a great scene in this chapter where essentially he's had enough of Kawaki's bullshit, and he ends up just decking him in the face, basically telling him to shut up right there, I'm gonna drag you back if I actually have to. You can do what you want, but I'm gonna fight Code, and that's just the way it's gonna be. This, of course, leads to that scene again of Ida just having, like, that weird sort of infatuation moment, which is interesting because, you know, the entire point of her character is her weird infatuation ability, and it's kind of reversing itself here, so to speak. It's really freaking weird. I was kind of hoping that maybe her brother Daemon would do something in this chapter, but again, he's basically just taking a nap the entire time while Code does all of the dirty work. He had a lot of really standout scenes, and he looked honestly pretty awesome in this chapter. I especially love the moment where he elbows Boruto and then immediately kicks him as he continuously throws Shuriken at him. I'm really interested to see, though, if with Boruto manifesting those Momoshiki powers, if it's going to do anything to push him back just a little bit more. It might even distract Code a little bit as he gets so just sort of into the moment of seeing an Otsusuki in their actual power. It might distract him enough for Boruto to do some pretty big damage, but as I said, and I'm sure a lot of other people are probably going to predict, this is probably going to be the moment where he gets that scar across his face. It just makes way too much sense with a character who literally has giant Freddy Krueger claws. I mean, it's just going to happen. Again, if I only had one complaint with this chapter, it's just that Konoha Village is way too slow to act. I just... I can't believe that Naruto is still just sort of like running around his house and everything, not doing anything. You would think that immediately he would be on the chase here, and essentially it's just used to serve and add a little bit of tension to everything that's going on here, to lead to that moment, seeing how far they can actually push Boruto and utilizing his new powers. But again, like I said, the biggest question is, who's really taking over here? Is it Boruto using that power, or has Momoshiki officially appeared? And if he does appear, is he really going to take any of Code's bullshit? I don't really think so. Otherwise, I really did enjoy a lot of the action in this chapter, although I would admit I would have liked a little bit more to actually happen, but everything that is here is still pretty entertaining at the end of the day with a pretty cool fight scene. But again, uh, there are some moments in this chapter that don't work for me. That, that giant Naruto head moment for me, like, man, that has just got to be one of the worst pieces of art that I've ever seen from the entire series. And while I can't wait to see Baruto utilize this power and hopefully wreck Code up a little bit, I'd like to see Kawaki somehow get involved in the battle here. I'd like to see that maybe 
he's been influenced by Boruto a little bit more here, realizing that he doesn't necessarily have to give himself up. Maybe he can actually help his newfound friend in this fight, which I think would honestly be pretty freaking sweet. And it would also give them a little bit more of an edge against Code. But the fact of the matter is, they've already built up the fact that Code is one of the most powerful characters in the entire series. So I just don't see this being a victory for Boruto at the moment, but who knows what sort of surprises could come our way in the next couple of months. As for this chapter right here, I thought honestly it was pretty solid. Even with some of the weirder moments and some of the bad artwork, I thought that this was a solid addition to the series, which is why I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. I would really love to hear from you guys though. That's one of the main reasons I like making these videos, so we can have a discussion about the latest chapters here and our thoughts and theories, hopes and dreams for the future. So let's talk all about that. Comment section below. Is Momoshiki taking over? Is Boruto simply borrowing that power? And is this going to be the big moment where he receives his distinctive scar? And what do you want to see from the future of Boruto, Naruto Next Generations? So there it is, my friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been making a lot more content lately. I've been trying to do these discussion videos every week. I just did one on Kashin Koji and his potential for the future of the series. There will be a link for that video at the very end of this video, so please please make sure to check that out. I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.